So in this video, we'll take a look at how to get started with the first person exploration kit version 2.0. So uh, we're going to make a brand new scene and go from nothing to uh, being up and running with the new kit and have a couple of interactions. So first thing, create a new scene and delete the main camera. Um, next, uh, create a plane or a cube or some other geometry for the player to walk on. Now I'm also going to uh, change the material so it looks a little bit better and make sure that that's at the origin. So here's my plane. Next thing, um, grab the FPE core prefab and put that in your scene and hit the play button. So there's my basic player. I can crouch and run and jump and that sort of stuff. Um, so that's basically it to have a basic player, but now we'll add some interactions. So you probably noticed here, um, I got a warning saying that there's no start location found. Um, I can add a start location if I want. If I don't, I don't have to. If there isn't one, then the player will start at the origin, but just for the sake of this demo, we'll, we'll add one, and I'll just call it player start, and then we'll add the player start location. Now this represents um, a transform that the player will be placed at when the game starts. So um, they will be facing the uh, Z forward, so the, the blue Z plus uh, there. So I'll put that right at the edge of the world, and when I hit play again, uh, my player will be right where that transform is. So you can see I'm right at the edge of the world here. Now, if you're going to have multiple levels in your game, you don't need to have a start in every level, you just need to have a start on a level where the new game will start. So say your menu is scene 0, your first level is scene 1, your second level is scene 2. Um, you can just have a start in scene 1 and then when you go from the main menu to the first playable scene, you'll be placed at the start location and then you'll use doorways, which we'll go over in another video, to transition between levels. So next I will add a very basic pickup. So I'm going to add a cube and I'm going to scale that down to maybe half size, um, put it at the origin and then give it a material. And then I'm going to add the pickup script. Um, now just for the demo, I'm going to say I am a demo object. So if I hit the, I'll maximize the screen, I'll hit play here, walk over to the cube. See I have I am a demo object flavor text there. I can pick up the cube and look at it, you can see it's a little bit too close to the camera, maybe it's a little bit too big. So I can just um, either scale that down or I can have an examination offset forward and maybe I'll make that one, so it'll be one unit away from the camera. So that's maybe a little bit too far, but you can play with these values and really dial that in with the size of the model depending on the size and shape of your mesh. You can um, play with those options and get the pickup feeling right. So next we are going to add a very basic activatable type. So I will also use a cube and I'll drag that into the scene. I'll call this uh, my toggle because we're going to use the toggle type of activation. And I'll give this cube a material so it's off when the toggle is off. That'll be my default state. And I will add the um, interactable activate script. So if I open that up, I'm going to uncheck highlight on mouse over because I don't want this specific object to highlight when I look at it. And I'm also going to change my fire type to toggle. Now if I run this scene, we'll see what happens. So walking over to my default interaction string, because I haven't, I haven't customized the text yet, but if I click on the activation, um, nothing happens, because I haven't configured anything to happen yet. So you, you see this uh, warning down here that says um, object my toggle is of type toggle, but there's no deactivation event specified, considering using a different type. So we want to use a toggle type, uh, but it's basically a warning us that we haven't specified any events to happen with a toggle. So we we went into the scene, we interacted with the object, and nothing happened because we didn't tell anything to happen. So I'm going to configure this now to toggle the material on this um, cube to red and green depending on the on-off state. So I will add um, one event for my activation event and one event for my deactivation event. And I'm actually just going to reference the object itself, so I'll drag that in there. And then I'll change the mesh renderer material in both instances, and I'll make the off state have the off material and the on state have the on material. And I'm also going to um, look at these other toggle options here. So I've got a couple of extra interaction strings I can customize. So and I'm also going to copy this toggle string up here. And if I run the scene now when I interact with the object, um, it should click back and forth between the two off and on materials. So there we go. Nothing too exciting, but you can see we're, we're switching state there and the text changes accordingly. 
Now you can add any other events, you can play sounds, do whatever you want, call custom scripts, anything. So there's a lot of demo objects that are included with the kit um, and they kind of escalate in complexity. This one, we didn't have to do any custom coding, uh, but if you wanted to you know, do something really deep and interesting, you can totally do that. Just call, call those functions from these events here. So the last thing we'll do is make a little table um, and we'll also give this a material so it looks a little bit different than the rest of our level. And what we're going to do is create a putback location for this pickup here. So um, I'm going to rename the pickup, call it my pickup. And I'm going to make a new object that's going to be a putback location for this pickup. So I'll create an empty object, call it my putback. And I'm going to add the putback script. And it's complaining I don't have a collider, so I have to add a collider first. So box collider will do. And I'm going to add the putback. And then I'm also just going to drag this pickup into here. An interaction distance of two, that's probably fine. But I'm going to look at my uh, box collider. It's a little bit too big probably. So what I'll do is just, I'll just scale down my pickup and make sure it's just kind of on my table like that. That's probably close enough. So next I'll run the scene, I'll grab our pickup and I'll put it in its put back place on that little table we just built. Now you'll see it still has a default string there. That's because my pickup, I haven't specified a put back string. So I'll say place cube on table. And then I'll also get fancy and say I have a post examination string. I'll just say it has details. So when I pick up the cube, I'll examine it. And then when I put it down, it'll say place cube on table. And then if I look at it again, it'll say it has details because I've examined it. So I know more about the object. I can also get that if I just pick it up, examine it, and then put it down. It says it has details. And then when I put it back, it says place cube on table. And there we go. So the cube is back in its home position on the table. So that was a very quick introduction to how to get started with the first person exploration kit version two. We just covered some basics, uh, a basic activation, a pick up, a put back and things like that. But if you open up the demo scene, uh, there's a bunch of other material in here that you can look at. Lots of example objects, complex interactions, basic interactions, diaries, um, little puzzles to solve and things like that, some inventory on the table. So everything in the kit is explained fully in the scene through text and interactions and notes and journals and things like that. So um, have a play through the demo scene. And if you have any questions, please email support at wildfun.com. Thanks.